Well, welcome back once again as we continue to make progress on this horse-drawn bobsled. Now on a wheeled vehicle, especially on some of these farm wagon heavy vehicles, what carries the load between the wheels is the axle and on top of the axle which the body sets on is the bolster. Well on this bobsled what carries the load between the runners is the bunk and then what carries the flatbed or the body on top of the bunk is also a bolster. So this week we're going to make progress and in fact completely finish the bolsters and the bunks on this bobsled. And where these bunks sit on the runners, they have a tendency to wear over time. So I'm going to put a little wear plate there to kind of help prevent some of this wear. This sled is going to be a 52 inch wide track sled. So we're going to set these at the appropriate spacing along with the irons that will slide down between the bunk pegs. Now if you remember a couple of videos back when I made these bunks, this bottom edge is not square but at a bevel. Well these irons that we press shaped are what keeps the runners at the proper angle and because they're at an angle the inside edge of the runner bites into the snow and helps this sled run straight.
So the front and rear bunks are built exactly the same. But what will differentiate between the front and the rear is that the rear bunk will have a bolster that is bolted permanently to it, while the front bunk will have a bolster that will receive a fifth wheel plate and kingpin, and this allows the front runner assembly to turn and steer the bobsled. And while a wood axle farm wagon on those bolsters actually will have a vertical standard on those bolsters, these bobsleds just have a round stake that is a taper driven stake into the end of these bolsters. And then this is the rear bolster and I will mark out and drill two half inch bolts that will actually bolt it to the rear bunk. Well, some of you kind of watching and following along are going to be thinking to yourself, I thought he said this was going to be a tapered hole. Well, this is maybe a convoluted way to get there. Maybe some would say this is a redneck's way to approach it. But if you follow along, you'll see we're going to end up with a tapered hole, inch and a half on the top, inch and a quarter on the bottom.
Well, like I said, it's kind of a redneck way to get there, but it works. So now I'm going to turn down some pegs so I can fit this inch and a half to inch and a quarter hole.
Well, these little clips that hold on the bridge iron was a little piece that I forgot to put on in the last video. So we're kind of catching those up. The next thing we have to do is put the front and rear roller that has the reach and the tongue. And then we'll kind of finish it up. We'll do that next week. Once again, thanks for watching.